My third story is about depth. When I was 17, I read a quote that went something like, if you live each day as if it was your last, someday you'll most certainly be right. <laughs> it made an impression on me. And since then, for the past 33 years, I've looked in the mirror every morning and asked myself, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I am about to do today? And whenever the answer has been no for too many days in a row, I know I need to change something. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. I can now say this to you with a bit more certainty than when death was a useful but purely intellectual concept. No one wants to die. Even people who want to go to heaven don't want to die to get there. And yet, death is the destination we all share. No one has ever escaped it. And that is as it should be, because death is very likely the single best invention of life. It's life's change agent. It clears out the old to make way for the new. Right now, the new is you. But someday, not too long from now, you will gradually become the old and be cleared away. Sorry to be so dramatic, but it's quite true. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. I get stared at everywhere I go, and the moment people meet me, if they don't know a thing about my resume, they automatically, just by the human nature, think to themselves, oh, it must be so difficult to be that man. If somebody pities me, they're wasting their time. Because I have chosen a life of strength. And I am here to help you choose a life of strength. But I'm going to tell you, we've talked about drugs here. You know what the worst drug to ever hit the human race is? Pity. The moment you feel sorry for another person, or the moment you feel sorry for yourself, you're hosed. You are totally, completely frozen in potential. We cannot pity ourselves. We cannot pity you. Yes, I get to go home today. Yes, I get to have what many would call freedom. But I'm going to talk to you about freedom, about what I really choose to see freedom as. Because like I said, you cannot believe predictions that do not empower you. The second lesson today is you are not your condition. You are not. I am not disabled. Sure, I'll take the handicapped parking privileges. <laughs> but that does not define me as a man. Not able. I've been looked at and treated my whole life as if I am not able. I have had to rise above and show people that the only disability is one's refusal to adapt. You have to adapt to whatever environment you're in, even if it's prison. And what does adaption look like? I think it looks like celebration. Because when you meet people that are celebrating their life, you want to be around them. You want to learn from them. You want to do business with them. You want to hire them. Look, if you do not want to be seen as a prisoner or a convict when you get out of this, or even while you're in this, then it's an attitude. It is a belief in yourself that you bring value to the human race, no matter what your current condition, title, or stature is. 
Because if I believe that I'm disabled, I would wither up, I would be shy, I would be insecure, I would be afraid, I would act like I need your help. And the rest of humanity would be okay with that. But I choose something else. I choose to be strong. I choose to be a leader. I choose to have words to move this planet. I'll tell you why I was born. And I hope it inspires you to find out why you were born. I was born to rid this world of insecurity. Because when a human being is insecure, they do stupid stuff. When we feel like we're not enough, we chase external validation and external objects to try to tell us we're enough. Thank you. You are enough. I'll tell you, I made a pledge as a therapist to love all and you cannot feel sorry for yourself. When you feel sorry for yourself, you will wither. But there's a contradiction to feeling sorry for yourself. It's the opposite extreme. It's, it's I, what I call bullying yourself, beating yourself up, being your own enemy and telling yourself that all those predictions, those negative opinions, they're true, they're right, you're washed up failure, you're not going to amount to anything. Bullying yourself is the most dangerous thing that you could do. You cannot afford to pity yourself. You cannot afford to bully yourself. You have to love yourself. My chest started to implode. I said, just let me out! Let me out! I want another chance! I know it took so much time. So much time I wasted. Stupid amounts of time. And I worried about myself. And what did they like me? Or should I try this? Or what did I fail? No! I want another chance! Just give me another chance! And then the movie shut off. Then the world shook again. And pain came searing back into my body. And I loved pain. Because pain told me I was still alive. Do you get that? You get that. Every single one of you. If you're feeling pain, you are still alive. So I don't feel sorry for you that you're going through what you're going through. Because guess what? There's, there's still time on the clock. If you think that you're too old or too young, too thin, too fat, stop it right now. There's still time, but what I want to do is I want to remind you of something. You're going to rot. Your tissue is going to disintegrate off of your bones. And then your bones will disappear. As if you never were here. And it's debated what happens next for us, is it? Yeah. It totally is. But what's not debated is that there's still time on the clock for you. How do I know? You're breathing. You're hearing me and seeing me.